Hi all. Okay, today I'm going to demo out the enzyme lab, which is lab five. Um, and so we're going to look at enzymes. We're going to look at some properties of enzymes. Remember, enzymes are just specialized proteins that reduce the amount of energy needed for a reaction to occur. So they reduce the amount of activation energy. It's not adding energy. It is speeding up the reaction, but the way that they speed up the reaction is by reducing how much energy is needed for the reaction. So we're going to uh, experiment with one enzyme in particular, and that enzyme is called catalase. And so enzymes typically end in ASE. And so, and most of the time they're named after whatever they break down. Um, so for example, lactose, its enzyme is lactase. Um, amylose, its enzyme is amylase. Sucrose, its enzyme is sucrase. And on and on and on and on. Um, so <clears throat> at any rate, we're going to go through the procedure to test can you reuse enzymes? What happens when enzymes experience different temperatures? And what happens to enzymes when they experience different pHs? Okay, so first, I'm just going to do just a general test on enzymes. So you can see, here's a bunch of um, test tubes labeled out. Here's the enzyme that we're going to be doing. This is just chicken liver, but and really, you can use any type of liver. And um, this is hydrogen peroxide. So the enzyme catalase is found inside liver, and it breaks down the product hydrogen peroxide. So as cellular respiration works, so when we break down food, we take hydrogen peroxide, or sorry, when we break down food, we make hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is toxic to us. It's, it's a poison. And our liver then takes that hydrogen peroxide and it reduces it um, and makes it two simple products um, from one substrate. I'll let you figure out what those products are as the lab goes on and as you read the material. Okay, so first, what we're going to do is just show you the initial reaction. Hopefully you can see this. Um, I'm going to just take a little piece of liver, about yay big. I'm going to drop it into test tube A. And uh, I might actually just pick this up and show you. Okay, so this is test tube A. I'm going to take a mil or so of hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to add it to it, and you're going to see the reaction. So we're going to say that that reaction right there is what we're going to say a reaction level four. Okay, so we're going to estimate the speed of a reaction by how vigorous it bubbles. So we're going to say that that was a 4. Okay, and we're going to just sit there and let um, that reaction uh, progress. And then um, once it's completely done, we're going to do something with it. I'm going to do it again so you can tell whether or not this reaction is exothermic or endothermic. Okay, so again, I'm going to take another little piece of liver. Okay, I got some liver. I'm going to put that in test tube B. Hopefully, slide her down in there. Um, I'm going to have to get. Oh, I think the scalpel might fit in there. There we go. So slide that down in there. Okay. Now, I have a laser temperature gauge here. So I'm going to read the temperature of this vial. It's roughly 20 degrees, 20.4 degrees or so. If I can hit it. Yeah, 20.4, 21, 
Okay, it's jumping anywhere from 20.4 to 21 degrees. Now what I'm going to do is add hydrogen peroxide to that and see if energy is released. If energy is released and this process is exothermic, then you expect the container to warm up. Okay? If it's endothermic and energy is needed, then you wouldn't expect much of a change unless somehow we can supply energy to the uh, container. So again, I'm going to add hydrogen peroxide. Okay, and now we're going to look at the temperature. And it's at 22.6. Okay, and we can go back to our original container that's almost completely done and see what it is. It's at 30.2. And so the temperature is definitely increasing in these containers. So this one was at 22.6. Now it's at 24.8. And remember, room temperature in Celsius is about 22 degrees, 20 degrees. Um, we can tell, so if I shoot the table right now, the room temperature right here is 20.8 degrees okay, on the table. So you can see this is kind of overflowing, but again, that temperature keeps rising. It's 27.2 now, 27.6, and on and on and on. Okay? So that should give you an idea of whether the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour off this solution into this vial. So just the, whoop, maybe not. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pour off the solution okay, into this vial and keep the liver in this vial. Now we're going to test to see is this liver reusable and what is in the solution what's this solution made of okay so first I'm going to add a piece of liver to the old solution so I'm going to take off a chunk of liver here and I'm going to drop it into the old solution it gets down into that solution and you should see now that there is no reaction. Okay. So that liquid is no longer hydrogen peroxide. All right. Now, to the old piece of liver, I'm going to add new hydrogen peroxide. And you should see a reaction still occurs, it's still bubbling, and the liver is still breaking down hydrogen peroxide. Okay. So that's really procedure number one and two. And now we're going to test procedure three, which is going to look at the concentration of liver. Okay. So if we increase how much liver do we also increase the speed of the reaction? Okay, so there you can see I have a much larger piece of liver than I started with. I'm going to try to shove that down in there. Okay, I'm going to use the same amount, or roughly the same amount of hydrogen peroxide. And you can see the reaction occur. So you can be the judge of whether or not that reaction is occurring at a faster rate than this reaction. There the two are reacting at the same. Remember this is the old piece of liver in new hydrogen peroxide but it's still bubbling away. And that's that big chunk of or liver in hydrogen peroxide. Okay, when we come back, we're going to do a temperature test, well, three temperature tests, on the effectiveness 
of catalysts in breaking down hydrogen peroxide. Okay, I'm back. And now we're going to test the temperature effect on the enzyme catalase. So I have a test tube with 100 degrees written on it. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of distilled water, just simple distilled water, just to cover it up. Now, what I'm going to do is stick this in 100 degrees water, and most of you guys know 100 degrees Celsius is boiling water. And I'll show you that in just a second. Then I have a test tube with 37 degrees Celsius. 37 degrees Celsius is kind of like a warm water bath, okay, a bath that you might take um, to bathe yourself. That's about that temperature. And then 0 degrees Celsius. Now, 0 degrees Celsius is freezing. I'm going to stick this in the freezer. Note that a lot of freezers are minus something. Okay? So minus 4 is pretty typical. Um, so I'm going to stick this in the freezer and uh, it, might, it might freeze this up. We'll, we'll see. Okay. So, but the one thing is, is to 37 degrees Celsius and 0 degrees Celsius, I also have test tubes, one with hydrogen peroxide and 37 degrees Celsius, and one with hydrogen peroxide that's going into zero. Now, I would do that with the boiling one, but if you boil hydrogen peroxide, it's going to evaporate. And, uh, and it's also going to break down the bonds in the hydrogen peroxide. So I don't want to do that. Um, so what, with the boiling, we're just going to boil the uh, catalase, the enzyme, see what happens, and add room temperature hydrogen peroxide to it. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and stick those in. You can see this one is 100 degrees Celsius. It is boiling, so I'm going to stick that in there. We're going to leave them in there for about 5 to 10 minutes. Okay, and then this one is 37 degrees Celsius, or pretty close to it. Okay, so um, it's kind of a warm water bath there. Okay, I'm going to put those in there. And then I'm going to take the other two, 0 degrees Celsius put them in a test tube rack, and then run them into the freezer. Okay, so we'll go back here and stick them in our freezer. And have things fall out of the freezer after me. Um, okay, so they're going to go right there, and we're going to stick everything in there for five minutes. I'll come back after five minutes and I'll show you the results. Okay, I'm back and now we're going to look at the temperature experiment. First, I'm going to do the cold one, which I just pulled out of the freezer. You can still see a little frost on it. I took the temperature of the tube and it was 2.8 degrees Celsius. Okay, so it didn't quite make it to zero degrees Celsius after 10 minutes in the freezer reaction looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and combine the cold hydrogen peroxide with the liver and you can still see, it might be hard, but you can still see a slight reaction going on. Um, so it's reacting, but hopefully you remember what the original reaction looked like, the room temperature reaction. We were saying that was a 4, okay? and um, this one's not nearly as fast. It still is reacting, though. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and pull the boiling water one. I'm going to let that sit for just a little bit to kind of cool down. And then um, I'm going to pull the 37 degrees Celsius one. And we're going to go... 37 degrees Celsius into liver, so, and that's going to overflow everywhere. Um, so, uh, you could, I think it's pretty clear that that was a pretty fast reaction. Now, for the boiling, I'm going to go ahead and pour off the water that I added 
so I don't dilute the uh, the hydrogen peroxide and that's still a little bit warm yeah, but we're gonna go with it anyways um, shouldn't be too much of a difference I just hope hopefully I won't crack the bottom out of the test tube that's why you want to cool it down is because you're adding fluid that's a little bit colder and I don't want to crack it okay so now I'm adding the hydrogen peroxide and you can see some chunks floating but no bubbles no reaction I hope you can see that um, but from what I can see I don't see any bubbles coming off um, which means the hydrogen peroxide it, it still is hydrogen peroxide um, we can test to make sure that's still hydrogen peroxide we can take that 37 degree one okay, I'm just gonna pour the liquid off that 37 degree okay, and I'm going to add the liquid from the boiled into the 37 degree and there you see it's reacting again and therefore that was still hydrogen peroxide no magic okay. um, reaction didn't work all right, so now we're going to look at pH. So I have a pH tube of A, B, and C, and they all have about the exact same amount of liver in them. So I'm going to add some solution to them. I'm going to add pH A, and I'll come let you see these in just a second. So I'm going to add A to A, and I'm just going to cover the liver right, with that solution. So about two mils of solution are going in to cover and then B and enough solution to cover C. Now I'm going to wait 10 minutes for these. Okay, I'm going to put them back in the, the rack and then let you look at them. Okay, so A, B, and C. And here are the solutions. A has a pH of 3.08. B has a pH of 11.84. And C has a pH of 8.16. Just so you know that I'm telling the truth, okay, I'm going to go ahead and pH these real quick. Well, at least I'm going to pH B. Just so you can see there, the numbers climbing. Um, it's climbing a lot faster than what it is, so actually I'm going to change all these pHs probably because they've been sitting here for a while. So the pH of B, you can scratch the 11.84 and it's 12.38. This is after about 15 minutes, okay? I'm going to look at pH of C and see what the pH of C is now. Okay, it's going back down. Okay, and I'm going to correct these because this might take a little bit of time. I'm going to correct these and then I'll bring you back at after the 10 minutes. I'll give you the new pHs and uh, and then we'll look at the reaction. Uh, well, we'll look at what happens when you add pH or different pHs to the enzyme catalase. Okay, we're back. It's been 10 minutes on the pH test. I redid the pHs, and so there you can see that uh, beaker A didn't change, solution A didn't change, 3.8, or 3.08, still 3.08. Beaker B is the only one that changed significantly, went from 11.84 to 12.38, and then beaker C, 8.16 to 8.75. So that's a pretty good range. You know, pretty acidic, pretty basic, and close to neutral. So here are the solutions. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour off the solution and then add 
hydrogen peroxide to the liver. Again, it's been roughly 10 minutes, uh, and so we're going to add hydrogen peroxide. So this is A, hydrogen peroxide in, and I'll pick it up and give you a, a good close look at it. So you can see there, there's some bubbling going on. It's not a great deal, um, but there's a little bit of a reaction still occurring. Okay. Let's go to B. Hydrogen peroxide in. And you can see a little bit going in on this side over here. This side's pretty much empty. So it looks like maybe at least a portion of the liver still has some catalase in it. Um, but other portions seem to be uh, dead or denatured. Okay, and we're going to go with C. And more hydrogen peroxide. And you can see that C is working like all the rest of them did. Um, lots of catalase, pretty quick reaction. And you can see that those are the pHs again. 8 for C, 8.75, and then B is 12.38, and A is 3.08. And with that information, you should be able to finish the lab and make sure that you fill all all the procedures answer the questions and again if you have any concerns questions those kind of things go ahead and email me okay till next time